Welcome, family of God, to another teaching installment of When the Temple in Heaven is Open, Everything Will Change. Get ready to dive deep into God's holy word as we discover his gems and jewels, where the Bible tells us it is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but it is the honor of kings to search it out, as we see how God declares the end from the beginning. And from ancient times, things not yet done, saying his counsel shall stand and he will do all of his good pleasure. The Holy Spirit has a treat for us today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. Psalm chapter 20. To the chief musician, a psalm of David. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob defend you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and strengthen you out of Zion. May he remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifice. Salah. May he grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all your counsel. We will rejoice in your salvation, and in the name of our God, we will set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They have bowed down and fallen, but we have risen and stand upright. Save, Lord. May the king answer us when we call. This is the word of the Lord. Praise be the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for another opportunity to open up your word as you've given us life. You've given us life more abundantly, and you've anointed us from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet through the Ruach HaKodesh to lead us and guide us into all truth so that you could expound your word unto your sheep, Lord, because we hear you. The Bible tells us, your word tells us, you've told us that your sheep hear your voice and you know us. Hallelujah. And we follow you. And so we're following you, Lord. You are the good shepherd of the sheep and you are the only way. You are the way, the truth, and the life. You are the door. And if we go in and find pasture through you, we have a joy that is beyond all measure. The joy of the Lord is our strength, and we thank you that you have given us the strength to continue to fight the good fight of faith, as we have no quit, Lord Jesus. You have quickened us in our mortal bodies, and though we may get beat up here and there along this narrow road, that only a few people find. Though we may stumble, though we may fall, O oh Lord, though a righteous man may fall seven times, hallelujah, it's always you who gets us back up, hallelujah, because you have predestined us to inherit glory. You have chosen us before the foundations of the world to be a vessel of honor, hallelujah. And so we thank you for the choosing Lord Jesus Christ and here we are as your sheep at the table ready to feed upon the manna that you have prepared for us may our inner man be satiated with the word of God that renews us restores us regenerates us revitalizes us and gives us all the nourishment that we crave and desire which is you Oh, Lord, you told us to taste and see that you are good. And, Lord God, you are good. That my soul knows right well. Hallelujah. Bless us right now, Holy Spirit. And may we give you all the praise, praying for the peace of Yerushalayim. In the matchless, self-sacrificing name, the name that is above all names, Jesus the Messiah. We pray and ask it all. Amen. Well, hallelujah, saints of God. It's so good to be back with another teaching installment of when the temple in heaven is open, everything will change. And I was meditating, hallelujah, I was meditating on Psalm 20 today. Uh, praise God, I appreciate your prayers, family of God. I appreciate how we're all together in this forever. 
many members, but we're one body. And so I thank you for uplifting me in prayer as the Lord puts uh, you on my heart. I pray for you. And as the Lord puts me on your heart, I pray that you would pray for me. Hallelujah. I pray that you would continue to fight that good fight of faith as uh, a faithful minister. Hallelujah. Of the gospel. And as an ambassador for Jesus Christ, as you are a minister of reconciliation. And so I've been out on the battlefield, hallelujah, uh, carrying uh, the cross that God has given me to carry, amen. And that's to declare the gospel at all costs, hallelujah, so that we can save the lost uh, through the power of the Holy Ghost, which draws sinners unto Jesus Christ, hallelujah. For how will they call upon him unless they hear about him, right? <laughs> How they going to know about Jesus unless somebody tells them, right? Because they sure ain't going to the church house. You know that. <laughs> you know the last place they going is the church house, right? They ain't, going to the, they ain't going to the building. So we got to be the church, and we are the church, hallelujah. And so as his hands and his feet, we got to go and tell. We got to go out in all the world and preach the gospel as a witness unto all nations, hallelujah. Uh, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to obey everything that God has commanded. And then the Bible says the end will come when the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. Hallelujah. And so we know that that day is fast approaching. And so uh, I was in New Orleans today. Hallelujah. I was down in the bayou. Hallelujah. <laughs> I was down on Canal Street. Uh, today is what? the uh, This day is uh, August 3rd. Hallelujah. August 3rd, I was down on Canal Street uh, at about noon, amen, and the Holy Spirit was using me to uh, give out uh, the word of God, the words of life, hallelujah, and so it's always a blessing, you know, to be of service, and I've been traveling, I'll put a couple clips at the end of this video of the travels, just little, little blurbs, I went to um, Mobile, Alabama yesterday, and Biloxi, Mississippi, not not Biloxi, I'm sorry, uh, Gulfport, Mississippi, amen. Uh, so I had double duty yesterday as well. And so I'm just thankful that, you know, we can still work while there's time to work, right? We got to work the works of God while it is day, right? Because the night's coming when no one can work, right? And when the night, when the night comes, hey, that's it. And we're going to be in the Father's house, hallelujah. And we look forward to that day. This is what we're going to talk about in Psalm chapter 20. This is just so beautiful. I just marvel at the word of God. I mean, it's just a never-ending treasure trove because here in Psalm chapter 20, we got, the, we got the usual suspects of truth, right? We got the 444, right? The 444 code, which is always rapture, okay? We got uh, the dark and cloudy day, hallelujah. We got Babylon the Great, right? We got the sanctuary. We got, we got the whole shebang, right? We got, we got the day of muster. Right? We got everything in Psalm chapter 20. You know, it's just so beautiful how, you know, God doesn't change. Amen. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So I pray that you're blessed, that you're at the table, ready to hear what God has to speak to you personally, because he has a word for you. Amen. He has a word for you, child of God, right here, right now. He has a word for you. And I pray that your heart would be open to receive it. Hallelujah. Verse 1. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. Hallelujah. May the name of the God of Jacob defend you. So let's just break down verse 1. I was spending a whole lot of time right here. It, just, it, 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 it starts right here, but it gets good as we keep on going. But it's good right here. Amen. So may the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob defend you. So the Bible is telling us that God is going to answer those of us who have a relationship with him. In the day of trouble, God says that the name of the God of Jacob, which is what? Jesus Christ, right? The name of the God of Jacob is going to defend us with that. What does the defense mean? The defense means that he's going to rescue us. That means that there's going to be a rapture. And who's the one that's going to be doing the rapturing? Well, it's the name of the God of Jacob, Jesus Christ, because he is the one who's going to hear us in the day of trouble. So what's the day of trouble, right? What is the day of trouble? Well, I want to show you. Uh, a couple things. Let me go to eSword. The day of trouble, if you type it into your eSword or your Bible app, uh, this phrase will come up 10 times, 10 times in the Hebrew scriptures. And so all of these 10 times which speak about the day of trouble is showing us what's going to happen in that day. And the day of trouble is connected to what? The day of trouble is connected to the Assyrian appearing, right? 
Because the first time that we see the day of trouble is in 2 Kings chapter 19, verse 3. This was during the time of Hezekiah, when, Hez when Hezekiah was a uh, king in Jerusalem, right? He was uh, a great king, amen? He walked in the ways uh, of uh, Yahweh, yod heh vav -Heh, hallelujah, like, uh, like David did, amen? And the record of Hezekiah is, is impeccable, all right? According to what's written, hallelujah. Uh, compared to all the other kings. And so here we see that he was in trouble, though. And Isaiah was the prophet during this time. He was in trouble, and he cried out to God because there was an attack coming from the north, right? The Assyrian, right? The Assyrian was on his way. And so you know this story. This is when, you know, Hezekiah cried out, and he told the Lord that this is a day of trouble and of rebuke and of blasphemy, for the children are come to the birth. And there is not strength to bring forth. Right? So in Hezekiah's day, there was a, an attack coming from uh, the king of the north known as the Assyrian, Sennacherib. And Rabshakeh came down to blaspheme his emissary. Rabshakeh came to uh, blaspheme uh, the name of the living God. Right? And so God heard all of this. And what did God do? You know the story. Uh, 185,000 Assyrians were slain in one night by the angel of the Lord. Hallelujah. And uh, the Assyrian was slain by his own two sons in the house of his God, Nisroch. Right? And But what is God showing us? What is he showing us? He's saying that when the final future day of trouble comes, right? Because God is always telling us to end from the beginning. There's going to come another attack, right? From the Assyrian, who Isaiah uh, loves to call as a type of the Antichrist. The Assyrian is going to come, the king of the north, right? He's going to come and he's going to uh, make war against uh, those who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ, according to the book of Revelation. And he's going to set his tabernacle in, the, uh, in between the two seas, right? The Mediterranean Sea and uh, the Dead Sea, right? He's going to set his tabernacle and commit the abomination of desolation on the Temple Mount at the midpoint, and he's going to declare that he is God. Okay, this is all future coming of prophecy, which is about to be manifested in our day and age. And so this is what the Day of Trouble is all about, the appearing of the Antichrist, right? The second time we see the Day of Trouble is what we're going over right now in Psalm chapter 20, verse 1, and we're going to see that there's going to be a rapture, hallelujah, when the Day of Trouble begins. The third time we see the day of trouble is in Psalm chapter 50. Psalm chapter 50, verse 15 says, And call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, and you shall glorify me. And so if you read the whole context of uh, Psalm chapter 50, this is also talking about the day of the rapture, when God gathers all of the saints, those who have made a covenant with him by sacrifice, right? When he calls uh, to heaven above, uh, the dead in Christ rise first, and to the earth beneath, those of us who are alive and remain, and we're all caught up on this day of trouble, right? Uh, because the blessing always comes before the curse. The day of trouble is the day of the curse. God says this in Psalm chapter 50. He says, Psalm chapter 50, verse 4, He shall call to the heavens from above, uh, dead in Christ rise first, and to the earth, uh, those of us who are alive and remain, that he may judge his people, being the seed of Christ. What's going to happen? Psalm 50, verse 5, Gather my saints together unto me, rapture, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Hallelujah. Okay, have you made a covenant with God by sacrifice? Okay, have you entered in to the sacrifice that he's provided? Hallelujah. And now is the sacrifice of your lips, thanksgiving and praise. Hallelujah. Have you overcome the world, the flesh, and the devil by faith in Jesus Christ? Have you set your seal to this, that God is true? Have you been identified with the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world? His name is Jesus Christ. Have you been uh, crucified with him and buried and raised to newness of life through the power of the Holy Ghost? Have you been born again? God says on the day of trouble, amen. <laughs> God says on the day of rebuke, hallelujah. God says on the day when a woman is going to give birth to wind, hallelujah. <laughs> on that day when the woman goes into labor and she brings forth wind, according to Isaiah, amen. The Bible says that that wind is the Ruach, 
Hallelujah. The same word for spirit. Uh, the woman Israel is going to give birth to all those who have been born again of the spirit of God. And God is going to say, gather my saints together unto me. Hallelujah. Those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Hallelujah. I don't want to get too riled up. Amen. We're only, we're only 15 minutes in. We're going to get riled up. Hallelujah. By the grace of God. Amen. And so here we see Isaiah chapter 22. This is about the oracle concerning Jerusalem. Again, talking about this attack. Right. This attack that's going to come when the day of trouble begins. For it is the day of trouble and of treading down and of perplexity by the Lord God of hosts in the valley of vision. Breaking down the walls and of crying to the mountains. Okay. <laughs> this is the sixth seal. Right. This is when God stands upon a wall with a plumb line in his hand. And if you ain't on the wall because you're uh, in him. Right. If you're not found in him on the wall because he's the head and we are the body. If you're not with God on that day when he stands up and he's standing upon a wall because he is the rock, right? He is, he is Ebenezer, right? He is the rock. And upon that rock are seven eyes. Upon that rock is the body of Christ. Hallelujah. With him. And the plumb line is righteousness. And you're not with him on the day when he stands up. Well, God says, Isaiah chapter 22, verse 5 in the valley of vision, it is a day of trouble. Ooh, trouble. It is a day of trouble. And of treading down and of perplexity. Okay. <laughs> you talk about people ain't going to know what to do. My goodness. Okay. You, you talk about running around with, like a chicken with your head cut off. When there's number darkness, you can't even see where you're going. Come on now. You can't even see where you're going. It's number darkness. You talk about perplexity, breaking down the walls. Every wall falls to the ground. That's Gog and Magog. You see that right there, right? Every wall falls to the ground. Everything that can be shaken will be shaken on this day. You see, this is what I don't get. This is what I don't get, family of God. Hear me out right quick. <clears throat> I, I, it's like people just want to sugarcoat everything. I don't understand why people want to, they want to massage the apocalypse. Right. They they want to they want to put they want to put a, a, a little bomb of Gilead on the apocalypse when the healing ointment has been given to us right now. OK, before the curse comes. Right. You, you, you can't massage the bomb of Gilead. OK, you can't massage the bomb of Gilead for those who didn't want the bomb of Gilead. And so people want to massage the apocalypse. Right. They want to soften the blow. No. You cannot soften what God has decreed, okay? This is what God said. God has promised this. My goodness, help me, Holy Ghost. This is what God promised, okay? I mean, let me, as a matter of fact, let me just, let me just type it in, because I, I don't have it memorized, this description verse. God has promised this, okay? This is in, it's in the New Testament. I can believe it's in Hebrews, okay? Right here, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 26. Okay, verse 25. This is what we're talking about. I'm thinking at verse 25. Help me, Holy Ghost. See that you refuse not him that speaketh. Talking about Jesus. You can't refuse the one who's speaking. Okay, he's the word of God. Amen. For if they escape not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth. But now he has promised, hallelujah. He's promised this family of God. Hear me out. Because this is what God says. Yet once more, amen, I shake not the earth only, but also heaven, hallelujah. This, 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 is, this is the promise of God. You see, I don't, I, don't, I don't get it. When I hear people talking, you know, trying to massage the apocalypse, like, oh, it's going to be, you know. No. Okay. God said it's a day of treading down and of crying to the mountains, right? Six seal, rocks cover me, uh, mountains fall on me, right? This is a day of treading down and of crying to the mountains. God says wailing in all streets. I, you see, I don't, I don't get it. This is what I don't get, family of God. It's like people may say stuff, but it's like, do they really believe it? Because if you if you if you're quoting what the Bible says, God means what He says. God says wailing in all streets. Okay, it, it, every street of everybody that's left behind wailing. Okay, God says howling. 
in all the highways, every single highway howling. Okay. God says every wall fall to the ground. Every wall is going to fall to the ground. God says that not only is the earth going to shake, the whole entire earth. Okay, you already know. Maybe never been in an earthquake, but you, you've seen pictures, videos. You can't even stand when there's an earthquake, right? You can't stand when there's an earthquake. So imagine the whole earth shaking, the greatest earthquake in human history. The book of Revelation describes it. Okay. But God said it's not only the earth, though. That's the thing. Hallelujah. You see, because everything that can be shaken will be shaken. God said also heaven. How are the heavens shaken? Well, there's war in heaven, right? Okay. You know the fourth eye wheel. I talked about this in the last video. Tied of the devil, right? The devil's fourth eye wheel, okay? When, when the door opens, right? Uh, when, when the door opens, uh, the eye wheel of the enemy is I will ascend above the heights. Woo! You talk about proud. Woo! Woo -hoo -hoo. It hurts my soul just to say it. Ooh. I can imagine the pride of such a creature. Can you imagine the pride of such a creature? This is what he said. God said he said this in his heart. This is what he said, family of God. This is what he said. Isaiah chapter 14. The fourth eye will of the five eye wheels of the dragon. Okay, the number four is the door. Okay. So when the door opens, Revelation chapter 4, and God says, come up here. Right? Because Jesus Christ is descending upon a cloud. Right? The enemy says, I will. My goodness. It just hurts me to say it. I will ascend. This is what he said now. I will ascend on the same day that Jesus Christ is descending on the clouds. <laughs> I will ascend above. Above what? The heights. Can you imagine this guy? He only he not only wants to ascend, he wants to ascend above. And not only above, he wants to ascend above the heights. The heights is the highest you could go. And what's the heights of the clouds? My goodness. Who's on the top of the cloud descending on the cloudy and dark day? Revelation chapter 14. Who's on the cloud? Let me show it to you. Let me show it to you. Look, look, look at the picture. Look at the picture that, that God is trying to paint. Hallelujah. I, I'm praying that uh, you are being blessed. I forgot I had this on. I've been speaking into this microphone because uh, I've been getting like complaints about you know the, my voice not picking up. So I got this microphone right here. So I've been speaking into that. And uh, I forgot I had the screen recording. I forgot, I forgot I've been doing this lately. Well, last couple of videos, I guess. Let me show this to you right quick. Hallelujah. I pray that you're being blessed. As you see, hey, we're only on verse 1. Okay, and, and look how it's going to get real good. Amen. It's going to get real, real good. Hallelujah. We got the usual suspects. Amen. Because this is encouragement. God said encourage one another with these words. Right? Because it's all about the rapture, about the rescue. So this is the day when Jesus Christ comes like lightning from east to west, sitting upon a cloud, golden crown on his head, sharp sickle in his hand, and he's coming at the time of the harvest, right? Revelation chapter 14, who's on the cloud? Verse 14, then I looked and behold, a white cloud, and on the cloud sat one like the Son of Man having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle, and another angel came out the temple, Michael, that's the voice of the archangel, crying with a loud voice to him who sat on the cloud, thrust in your sickle and reap, for the time has come for you to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. So he who sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. That's the rapture. Okay, now, but now check what the enemy said. This is what the enemy said about this day. Right? His fourth eye will, this is what he said that he that he wants to do. No, he didn't say he wants. He said, I will. Can you imagine this guy? And no, he won't. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay. This is what he said in his heart, though. He said, I will on this day. No, you won't. Oh, no, you won't, you dragon. Okay. He said, I will. My goodness. Get into the text, family of God. This is the heart of our of the enemy. Okay, of our enemy. This is this is his heart. This is what he said he's gonna do on the cloudy and dark day, but he's not. Hallelujah. God said this, Isaiah chapter 14, verse 13. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. One, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Two, I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farther sides of the north. Three, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Oh, my goodness. 
<laughs> okay. So the fourth one is what we've been talking about when the door opens. The enemy said he's going to ascend above the heights of the clouds. So that means that the enemy wants to be above God on this day, right? The enemy wants to be above God on uh, Revelation chapter 14, 14 day. <laughs> the enemy said he want, he will. This is what he said. He, I will. My goodness. You talk about pride. He said, I will. No, oh no, you won't, dragon. <laughs> oh no, you won't, dragon. Praise God. That's why God had to say it. Look, he said this in uh, Isaiah chapter 14, verse 15. Yet you shall be brought down to hell. Hallelujah. To the lowest depths of the pit. Amen. Put him down there at the bottom. Go down there, dragon. Amen. Forever. Okay. But on the cloudy and dark day, this is the reason why the heavens are shaken. There's war in heaven. Revelation chapter 12. That's the reason why the heavens are shaken, right? There's war in heaven. Everything that can be shaken is going to be shaken on this day. Hallelujah. Everything that's going to, uh, that can be shaken on the day of the storm is going to be shaken on this day. Okay. And so all of the fallen host, all of the heavenly host that fell with Lucifer are going to be dragged in his tail on the day when Michael and all the good angels stands up and they kick his butt. And all the fallen angels, and they kick them out. Okay, and one third of all the stars are cast to the earth. Okay, instantaneously. This is supernatural. You don't want to be left behind to see it. Right, because God says, under his feet, there's darkness. Right? There ain't no darkness going to ascend above the heights of the clouds. No. Okay, it's impossibility. Okay, it's an impossibility on the day when Jesus Christ descends on the clouds that uh, the enemies of God will ascend above the heights of the cloud. No, it can't happen, right? That's why God said in Psalm 18 that darkness is under his feet. Hallelujah. So I pray that you uh, uh, captured that uh, truth. Amen. Psalm chapter 20, verse 1, back here though. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob defend you. So we're talking about this day of trouble, right? Back to the day of trouble. Uh, let me just type this in again because I want to show you this day of trouble is connected to what? The day of the Lord, right? It's connected to the day of the Lord and it's connected to um, Old Testament. Uh, day of, day, I said day of the trouble. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm hyped up, family of God. Day of trouble. Here we go. Uh, Ten verses, amen? So the day of trouble in uh, Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 15 is connected to the day of the Lord. Verse 14, the great day of the Lord is near. It is near and hasted greatly. Even the voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty man shall cry there bitterly. Okay. Okay, how strong you think you are. Okay, how big, bad, and tough you think you are. Okay, God says the mighty man shall cry there bitterly. God said wailing in all streets. Okay. This is, this is the thing that I'm talking about. I don't understand what people speak about the apocalypse right when it begins. And the apocalypse is what? It's the revelation of Jesus Christ. What? On the clouds first. You see, this is why we could talk for hours on here, family of God. I'm serious. I, I, I really could just talk for hours about this subject in hours. And that's what we do on this channel. But I'm talking about like straight through. Because there's just so many different moving parts. If, if everybody would understand all the moving parts as the Holy Spirit puts it together, we would all have a better understanding of what God's game plan is for the cloudy and dark day. You see, on the cloudy and dark day, amen, on the day of rebuke, right, on this day, my goodness, if you are left behind, it's, just, it's unfathomable. And, it, and, that's, and it's just the beginning. That's the whole thing. It, that, that's the whole thing. It, it's it, it's it's just so terrible, right? It's just so terrible. It's just so terrible right when it begins because we're talking about the revealing of Jesus Christ. Okay, what did God say? God said in the book of Acts, right? This this is this is a, a historical event, right? When Jesus Christ ascended back to heaven on the Mount of Olives, the disciples were looking at him, right? The disciples were looking at him go up, and they saw him, right? They saw him ascend back to heaven. And as they kept on looking up, right, the Bible says that a cloud received him out of their sight, right? So the last thing the disciples saw as they were looking up into heaven was a cloud. And then what happened? You know the story. You know the story. Okay, God can't lie. This is the whole thing. God can't lie. So what happened? There was two angels that appeared, right? 
And they said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye here gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus that you saw go into heaven will come in the like manner as you saw him go. So what was the last thing that the disciples saw as they saw Jesus Christ ascend into heaven? The last thing they saw was a cloud. The angels said, and the angels were good angels. They can't lie. Okay, they were speaking on behalf of God. They said, this same Jesus <laughs> that you just saw go up is going to come in the same manner. So the last thing the disciples saw was a cloud. So as we're to look up, right, at the time of the end, God says, look up when these things begin to happen because your redemption draws nigh. As we look up, what are we looking for? We're looking for the cloud, right? And that's how the apocalypse begins. The apocalypse begins when Jesus Christ rides on the cloud swiftly in the Egypt. Ooh, he coming swiftly. You know that. Now, you know that, hallelujah. <laughs> now, you know he coming swiftly, amen, okay. The Bible says on that day when he rides like lightning, hallelujah, from east to west, swiftly on a cloud in the Egypt, okay. The Bible says the idols of Egypt will be moved at his presence, hallelujah. Everything that can be shaken, I'm telling you, this is what the, this is what the Bible says. That's why you don't want to be left behind. Okay, this is what the Bible says. You're going to shake. Okay, end of discussion. I don't care what anybody says. Okay, this is exactly what the Bible says. The Bible says you're going to shake if you get left behind because your foundation is the sand. I mean, how many different parables have God given us? How many different examples has he shown us? That if you are not on the rock, if you're not on the wall with him, on the day when he stands on the wall, if you're not in him, not having your own righteousness, but the righteousness that only comes by faith in him. If you're not with him on that day, that means that your foundation isn't solid. And the storm, when it comes, and it's coming, hallelujah. The storm, when it comes, when the rain descends, hailstones and coals of fire, right? When the uh, flood beats upon your house, the rushing of the nations, <laughs> right? And when uh, the wind blows, uh-oh, four winds release. They go to four horses. They're getting out their gate. Get out that gate now. Okay. Bible says if you built your house upon the sand, God says great is the ruin of your house. Right? I mean, natural, you know, logical understanding of how you build houses uh, during the time of a storm. If you have built your house upon the sand and there's a storm coming, well, you're going to be in a whole lot of hurt. I mean, this is just natural, you know, logical understanding and reasoning. So imagine on the day of the supernatural storm that God has hey, he's talked about and prophesied for thousands of years to come. Right. Even way back in Enoch's day, right? even Enoch prophesied about this day. The seventh from Adam, he prophesied about this day. Right. You know, God has talked about this day for eons. And so on the day when it's manifested and you're not with him, well, it's a whole lot of trouble. Right? It's a day of trouble, but that's not all. Look at what look what God says. God says it's connected to the day of the Lord, the day of trouble, right? The great day of the Lord is near. It is near and hasteth greatly. Even the voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty man shall cry there bitterly. That day is a day of wrath, right? A day of trouble. There goes the day of trouble. And distress, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. My goodness. Watch, man. What of the night? Watch man, what of the night? Watch man, how much time we got left? Not much time left. <laughs> and then watch man, watch man, what of the night? What time you got? Not much time left. Watch man, watch man. What's the weather report? A cloudy and dark day. A day of clouds and thick darkness. Woe worth the day, the prophet says. Okay. Woe worth the day, for the cloudy day is near. It shall be the time of the heathen. Okay. So this is the day of the Lord, right? This is the day of wrath. God has not appointed us under wrath, but to obtain salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Okay. So how can we be left behind in this day? Right. How can we be left behind when the New Testament tells us that we haven't been appointed under wrath? And God says that the day of the Lord, which is the day of trouble, is a day of wrath. So how can the church be left behind in this day? 
when it's the day of the cloud, right? When it's the day of the darkness, right? God is going to separate the light from the darkness. God doesn't change. Genesis chapter 1. God separates the light from the darkness. Hallelujah. Okay, so there has to be a separation on this day. And this is what we see in uh, Psalm chapter 20. But before we get back to Psalm chapter 20, I just want to bring out one other point. Hallelujah. Because we're talking about the usual suspects, right? The usual suspects, Jeremiah chapter 51. <laughs> The utter destruction of Babylon. Okay, this is another thing I don't get. My goodness, help me, Holy Ghost. This is another thing I don't get, family of God. <clears throat> I mean, I just don't know. I don't, I, you know, it's just like, uh, I don't know. You know, it's just like one of those head scratchers, you know. I mean, it's just like, um, how could I put this? Help me, Holy Spirit. I, I guess I guess people well I don't guess it has to be because they're they're definitely not hearing from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit doesn't bring confusion, right? The Bible makes it utterly clear. Okay, I'm not even talking about the identity of Babylon the Great. Okay, we don't even okay that you you want to debate that okay, but I'm just talking about the timing of things, right? I mean I've I've heard I've heard the most craziest theory still. I just heard, I just heard, I'm just, I'm just talking about some crazy theories, not even talking about the identity. Okay, if you can't even figure out the identity of Babylon the Great, well, but I'm just talking about the timing of when Babylon the Great falls. I mean, it's just so plain. It's just so plain, and in the book of Revelation, chapter 17 and 18, it makes it clear as day. But yet people say that Babylon the Great is going to be some city during the time of Jacob's trouble? I just don't understand it. I don't get it, family of God. Just don't get it. I don't get how people can say that Babylon the Great is a city during the time of Jacob's trouble. When the Bible is utterly clear that Babylon the Great is utterly destroyed in order for the fourth beast kingdom to take over with the ten kings. The Bible says it in Revelation chapter 17 and 18. Right, Everything we've been talking about. Right, in Revelation chapter 18, the people crying, wailing, howling, right? Throwing dust on their heads, crying out, alas, alas, howling in all the highways, all the streets, all everywhere, left behind, right? <laughs> left behind, and they see the utter destruction that has come upon the most powerful nation that's ever been on the planet. Utterly destroyed in one day, yea, one hour. And the whole earth is moved at that time, the Bible says. The whole earth shakes, right? And so here we see the utter destruction of Babylon, verse 1, Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 1. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will raise up against Babylon and against them that dwell in the midst of them that rise up against me a destroying wind. Okay, the winds are going to be released, right? The winds are going to be released. It's a terrible day. Terrible day. Verse 2, and I will send unto Babylon fanners. Okay, it's talking about foreign enemies, right? These fanners are foreign enemies, okay? Uh, foreigners, that's why the Bible tells us that he fills Babylon with caterpillars, right? Speaking about the enemies, the foreigners, right, the invaders. Surely I shall fill her with men as, as caterpillars, right? These fanners. Right, are the foreign enemies that God is sending into Babylon. That's why the borders are wide open. Right? I was just looking at reports. You know, I'm local to San Diego, California. And uh, they've been having all these boats coming up on, you know, the seashore. Right, and 10 to 15 people getting off these boats and, you know, going, you know, who knows where. Right? And this is like a repeated occurrence along the California coast, you know, coming from Mexico. But, you know, it's not just Mexicans that are coming from Mexico. Like, if, you, if you've been monitoring, you know, the southern border, it's, 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 it's Haitians, right? it's Chinese, it's, it's Iranians, it's all types of people at the border, right, coming, coming over. This is exactly what God said. <laughs> okay, God can't lie. God says he's going to send them to Babylon fanners. Let me show you, let me show you the, let me show you the Hebrew. Jeremiah chapter 51. I don't even know if we're going to get past verse 1. We are, though. Hallelujah. It's just so much. That's why I said we could, we could talk for hours about this. Okay, it's just so much. Amen. To get a robust, I know you want a robust understanding 
of the prophetic word of God because you're a Berean. And I know that you search these things out for yourself to see if these things are so. Hallelujah. Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 2. Look at this. Look at this. Look at the Hebrew. Okay. I will send unto Babylon. Okay. The widowers. Okay. Look at, look at the word for widowers. This is the Zerim. Okay. The Zerim are who? These are foreigners. <laughs> okay. These are foreigners. Another. All right. To be a stranger. <laughs> okay. Uh, the family of another household. Right. Foreigners. Right. As such, usually enemies. Right. <laughs> so God is sending these people. God is sending these foreigners. God is sending these enemies. Right. God is the one who's doing it. Look at the text. Um, Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 2. And will send unto Babylon Thanas. This is God doing this. He's, he's the sending these people because God says that every purpose that he's purposed against Babylon is going to be completed. Right? The most proud nation. <laughs> okay. The most proud nation, the one who thinks that she'll never see sorrow. The one that thinks that she'll never know the loss of children or widowhood. That nation. Right? The one that thinks she's the best. She's the best thing since mama's apple sliced pie. Right? She's the best thing since sliced bread. Okay, you know, you already know, who I, you already know who the identity of Babylon the Great is. You know that, right? And you see what's happening. <laughs> the borders are wide open. Uh, they're flooding in for the, for this day, right? This, this is <laughs> look what it says. And we're sending the Babylon fanners that shall fan her, okay? And shall empty her land. Okay, this is what God says. God said the whole land will be empty. At the time of the rapture, when we get caught up, and if you're left behind in Babylon the Great, well. <clears throat> I'm drinking uh, my Coke because my voice I'm trying to just get it uh, back again. And I appreciate your prayers. Hallelujah. Uh, appreciate your, uh, you know, recommendations for, you know, gargling with uh, hot water and all that. Hallelujah. Um, but, yeah, you know, preaching through the power of the Holy Spirit, you know, it takes a toll on you. Amen. I'm, I'm thankful that God restores and he, he, re he renews, he regenerates. Hallelujah. And he refreshes. Amen. But here we see, my goodness, Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 2, and will send unto Babylon fanners that shall fan her and shall empty her land. For in the day of trouble, they shall be against her round about. The day of trouble, right? That's what we're talking about. We're talking about the day of trouble. Okay, the day of trouble. What's the day of trouble? It's the day of the Lord, right? Zephaniah. Right? It's the day when the cloud comes in darkness, right? Okay, the day of trouble is when the, the Assyrian appears, right? Hezekiah, type and shadow, right? The uh, day of trouble is the day of uh, the valley of vision, right? The oracle against Jerusalem. There's attack coming against Jerusalem, Gog and Magog, Psalm 83. The day of crying to the mountains, right? The day of treading down, the day of perplexity. All this is wrapped up in the day of trouble, right? Right when the day of the Lord begins. That's when the day of trouble starts. Hallelujah. It's the day that we're looking forward to because we know what the psalmist says in Psalm chapter 20. Hallelujah. David says, may the Lord answer you. My goodness. Do you have a personal relationship with God? May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. Hallelujah. This is Psalm 18, right? <clears throat> this is Psalm 18. Psalm 18 tells us what's going to happen when the Lord answers us, right? Because we've been crying out. Right? We're crying out for the Lord to rescue us. Right? We're crying out for the Lord to bring the blessed hope. Right? We're crying out for a look right here on my hat, the rapture. I'll, I'll wear rapture everywhere I go. Right? Letting people know. And people always say, oh, rapture. You know, rapture. You know, I, I'm the walking billboard for Christ. Okay, letting people know the rapture is soon. Okay, whether I'm standing on the street corner, or I'm going to the gas station, or I'm going wherever God leads me. And... People just see the clothes I wear. It's going to be about Jesus Christ, so help me God. Right. It's going to be about Jesus Christ, so help me God. I, I, I used to wear everything else right, when I was in the world. Okay. I never was like in the high fashion because I didn't have no money like that. I was, <laughs> I was too hooked on dope. Right. But I still wore you know, foolish stuff. Wasn't glorifying Jesus Christ. But now that I've been born again, amen. Now that I've been born again, I want to wear something that declares Jesus Christ. Because wherever I go, okay, even if God tells me don't even say nothing, they're going to see the clothes, and the clothes going to speak for itself. Right? Because people are always looking. Right? People are always looking. 
They always looking in it, and hey, you look at me, you're going to see Jesus, amen. You're going to see something about Jesus on my person, hallelujah. And if God tells me to speak, first thing I'm going to say, so help me God, is something about Jesus. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. It's all about Jesus. It's what Paul said. Right, I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Amen. That's all I want to know. <laughs> I ain't got what, what, what else we gonna talk about? The stock market? Who cares? What, what, what you want to talk about? Yahtzee? What's who, what you want to talk about? Okay, you what you what you want to talk about? Okay, that's gonna edify uh, the both of us. Okay, yeah, we can have small talk. Okay, yeah, we can have small talk. But, what, but at the core of the conversation, the conversation is going to have to be about Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's it. That's all. I'm not budging. Amen. Okay. At the end of the day, hallelujah. <laughs> I'm talking about the end of the day when the rubber meets the road. Hallelujah. Okay. Right down to the nitty gritty. They say nitty gritty, nitty gritty. Hallelujah. I'm talking about that. Jesus Christ. Okay. That's it. That's all. That's the only thing that matters. <laughs> No matter which way you cut this cake, baby. <laughs> no matter which way you divide the pie. Okay. No matter, no, no matter which way you do it. Okay. At the end of the day, the only thing that matters is Jesus Christ and him crucified. <laughs> That's all. Okay. That's all. I, my, my eyes are fixed. Hallelujah. Okay. Okay. My, my eyes are fixed upon the goal. Okay. My eyes are fixed upon the prize. My eyes are fixed upon the destiny that God has prepared for me. My eyes are fixed on the one who's given me new life. I'm talking about new life. Do you know that you know that you know, family of God? That's the thing. You see, a lot of people, they don't know. That's why they're always talking about, oh, uh, you know, I got to work. I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to prepare for the apocalypse because they're not secure. They're not firmly rooted on the rock. If you're firmly rooted on the rock, you rest, right? And as you rest, you go out and tell, hallelujah. You, you go out and tell that if God can save a wretch like me, my goodness. You talk about doing everything in the book, save homosexuality, okay? If God can save a wretch like me, Okay, talk about a dope head. Okay, a high school dropout. <laughs> I mean, I'm just talking about. Man, I don't even. I don't even understand it. But God, Hallelujah, the grace of God. I'm talking. You talk about somebody who, who was, you know, I'm, um, you know, the old James, nothing nice. <laughs> a high school dropout. You you talk about a you talk about a big old idiot. You 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 looking at the old James right there? A big old idiot. A high school dropout. I was so lazy, like the like the proverb said. What the proverb say? The proverb said, as a uh, as a as a person, <laughs> as the sluggard turns over in his bed, like the door turns on his hinges, something like that. I I forget it verbatim, but that's what I, I was a sluggard. I was a sluggard, right? Turning over on my bed like uh, the door turns on his hinges. Right? I was just a sluggard. You you can't you can't get more sluggard than that. You know, being a high school dropout. With only one semester left, right, your senior year, and you were so lazy, I was so lazy, that I didn't even want to do the senior project, because I was so lazy, I wanted to do dope? Come on. But God, hallelujah, <laughs> who, who saved a wretch like me, amen, I was a work in progress, I didn't get saved until years later after that, I, I was a high school dropout at 18, I didn't get saved until what? When I was 24, 25, hallelujah, praise God, amen, I'm thankful, my goodness, I'm thankful, I'm thankful that God saved me as a young man, and he changed my life, and took a high school dropout to a college graduate with a master's degree, my goodness, only God, amen, mm -hmm. so I'm going to boast about Jesus, so that's why I go out and tell that we got a savior, we got a man in the glory who can save anybody if they come, but the question is, will you come, amen. Psalm 18, hallelujah. This is what we see when God answers us, right? Because the psalmist, the same psalmist, David, right? Same psalmist of Psalm 18 is the same psalmist of Psalm 20. God said through the psalmist, may the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. Well, here's the Lord answering us. Excuse me, Psalm 18, right? 
the pangs of death surrounded me, and the floods of ungodliness made me afraid. Hallelujah. The sorrows of Sheol surrounded me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried out to my God. Right? This is the day of trouble. Right? This is the day when the dragon stands before the woman to devour the man child as soon as we are born. Right. This is some type of last minute of attack, and we're crying out. People are saying peace and safety. Right? People are saying peace and safety, peace and safety. Uh, the church, the body of Christ, we're crying out. <laughs> the Lord Jesus, come and save us from all this mess. Right? And what's going to happen? In my distress, I called upon the Lord, Psalm 18, verse 6, and cried out to my God. He heard my voice from his temple, and my cry came before him, even to his ears. Hallelujah. So this is the same thing, Psalm 18, Psalm 20. Psalm 20, may the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob defend you. Okay, so who's the name of the God of Jacob? Right? It's Jesus Christ. He's the God of Abraham. Uh, the God of Isaac and the God of Israel. May the name of the God of Jacob defend you. The Bible tells us that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to him and we are safe. Right? And so on the day when God stands up, he's going to defend us. Right? On the day when God stands up, he's going to defend us. This is exactly what he does right, does right here in Psalm 18. We see him defending the righteous and everything shakes. Right? Everything shakes on this day. Verse 7, Psalm 18, then the earth shook and trembled, right? God has promised, yet once more, I shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. The foundations of the hills also quaked and were shaken. Okay, if God is saying that the very foundations of the hills <laughs> are going to be shaken, come on. He's talking about the whole earth. He's not talking, you see, people want to, it's like the same thing they did in the time of Noah. Right, they want to say, oh, it was just a local flood. No, this, this, is, this is catastrophic. This is global. Okay. What's, what's happening at the time of the revelation of Jesus Christ on the clouds? The Son of Man, it's global. Right? But it's not even, we can't even limit to global. This is universal. Right? Okay, this is heavenly. This is, this is everything. Right? This, this, is, this, is, this is God stepping in to all of history. Okay, because only he can work, and he's going to get everything straight. <laughs> he's going to straighten everything out. My goodness, he's going to make a short work. Hallelujah. Clock in, clock out. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay, short work for God. He's bringing out the boom of destruction. Amen. What's going to happen? Okay, the Bible says everything's shaken. Everything's going to be shaken because he was angry. Verse 8, smoke went up from his nostrils and devouring fire from his mouth. Coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also and came down with darkness under his feet. Right? So here the very heavens are also shaking. If you're bowing down the heavens, okay, this is God. You talk about a way to glory? Right? And you got, you got a contrary will, right? Up there in the heavens talking about I will. <laughs> you got a contrary voice talking about I will ascend above the heights of the clouds when Jesus Christ is descending upon the clouds? Well, God is standing up to show who's boss. Amen. My goodness. God is standing up to show who's boss. Hallelujah. <laughs> he's standing up now. Amen. Okay, he's standing up. He, he's showing who's boss now. Who's the boss man? Who's the big man? Okay, who's the big man? They said the big man upstairs. Hallelujah. <laughs> They talk about the big man upstairs. Okay, everybody about to see the big man upstairs. Amen. And God is going to stand up and he's going to show everybody, okay, who's boss. Hallelujah. Because he was angry, the psalmist says. Okay. He's angry on this day. The Bible says, for a long time he has kept silent. Amen. The Bible says, for a long time he has held his peace. Right? And on this day, when he bows down the heavens, when he's riding upon a cloud swiftly into Egypt, amen, and the idols of Egypt are going to be moved at his presence, on the day when he comes like lightning from east to west, amen, on the day when he causes his glorious voice to be heard, when he brings out his bow, amen, and fills it with Ephraim, hallelujah, okay, and he shoots out his arrow, right, like lightning from east to west, hallelujah, the Bible says, and he rode upon a cherub and flew. Amen. 
He flew upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness his secret place. His canopy around him was dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. From the brightness before him, his thick clouds passed hailstones and coals of fire. Right? 100-pound hailstones, the book of Revelation fleshes it all out. I think people get tripped up. I don't think, I know. People get tripped up because they want to read the book of Revelation chronologically. And so when they get to, like, Revelation uh, chapter uh, 15 or Revelation chapter 16, right? especially Revelation chapter 16, where they see after... Uh, the seventh bowl of wrath, which is only it is finished, and they keep on reading, they think, oh, that must happen at the seventh bowl of wrath. No. People are reading everything chronologically like a book. Like every event is happening after uh, the other event. No, it's not happening sequentially. Right? It's a puzzle. There were no chapters and verses until what? The 1500s. Right? It was a big old scroll. And so uh, God gave John, the revelator, this scroll. Uh, of the book of Revelation, and in the book of Revelation, you know, God has scattered his game plan throughout the text. And so it's only through the power of the Holy Spirit, okay, that we can piece together uh, the revelation of Jesus Christ to see that what we're actually looking at is the same event from different perspectives as we're looking at the revelation, because it's all about the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's why you have the same story right in multiple places in the bible it's the same story but sometimes there's added details right in the same story you see it through the gospel you see it through the old testament god doesn't change that's the whole thing god doesn't change so the way he acted in the past is how he's going to act again in the future so in the book of revelation he has the revelation you know scattered about his revelation throughout the whole text and so on the day when the trouble begins, on the day when God stands up, that's the day of the greatest earthquake in human history. That's the day of the hundred pound hailstones. That's the day when Babylon the Great is utterly destroyed, destroying the third beast kingdom completely. And in its place comes the fourth beast kingdom, right? When the dragon is kicked down out of heaven, him and all the fallen angels that his tail draws, which are one third, and they're all flung to the ground at the same time. Right? And then here he comes out to sea, right? With his man, the sea is the people, right? And John says that the only people who see that are those who are on the sand, right? Because he's standing on the sand when that happens. Look at this. It's just like these details, amen. It's like these details paint the perfect picture because the word of God is perfect. Amen. Right? John was standing on the sand of the sea when the beast rises up out the sea. Right? So he's given you he's given all of us a perspective of the left behind. Revelation chapter 13, verse 1. Then I stood on the sand of the sea. Right? So, so now he's given a perspective of the left behind. Because it's only the people who are on the sand that are going to see this. Everybody who's built upon the rock, okay, we're caught up when the door opens. Revelation chapter 4. Right? We're all caught up when the door opens. Okay, but because John is given the whole revelation of Jesus Christ, he also gives details about what's going to happen to the people who are left behind. And so the people who are left behind, okay, once they stand up, <laughs> well, after they've been knocked down, okay, and they survived uh, just the beginning, well, here comes, here comes the one, right? Here, here, here comes the one that people have heard about, but they didn't believe, right? Okay, and they're going to think that he is some type of God, my goodness. Because he got a bag of tricks, right? Antichrist. And they're going to believe he's God, right? And you're going to have a bag of tricks. And with that bag of tricks, well, the Bible says, you know, he's going to deceive many. Hallelujah. Psalm chapter 20. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob defend you. Amen. So the defense is the rapture, right? The defense is the rapture. That's when we get caught up into the Father's house because on the day when Jesus Christ bows down the heavens, hallelujah, he's going to send from above, right? He's going to draw us out of the many waters, right? He's going to bring us into the large place, right? Psalm 18, we see this right here, verse 16. He sent from above. He took me. He drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy, from those who hated me, for they were too strong for me. They confronted me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my support. He also brought me out into a broad place. 
He delivered me because he delighted in me. Amen. So this is the rapture. This is all taking place at the rapture. Okay. The name of the Lord, Jesus Christ, is a strong tower. The righteous run to him and we are saved. He is our defense. He is our shield. All right. He is our everything. And so God's going to do what? Verse 2, Psalm chapter 20. May he send you help from the sanctuary. What's the sanctuary? The sanctuary is the mikdash. Right? Here's the 444 code. Right? May he send you help from the sanctuary. Who is the help? Okay, the help is who? It's him. Right? Who's coming out the sanctuary? Him. Right? And Jesus Christ, the Father, and the Holy Spirit are all one. Right? And who is our helper? It's the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that when the restrainer is removed, right, when the helper is removed, when he sends from above and he takes everybody that has the helper back to himself, right, to the sanctuary, it's only then that those who have been left behind will see the one who comes out to see, right? If you built your house upon the sand. Psalm chapter 20, verse 2, look at this, right? May he send you help from the sanctuary. The sanctuary is the Mikdash. Remember the Mikdash? Here goes the Mikdash. Mem, Kuf, Dalit, Sheen, Mem, 40, Kuf, 100, 140. Da, uh, Dalit, 4, 144. Sheen, 300. 300 plus 144 is 444. Four, four. Here goes the 444 four, four code, right? This is code for the rapture. 444 <laughs> four, four is always code for the rapture. Revelation chapter 7, right? It's not until the 100... And 44,000 are sealed, right? That then the 444 happens, right? Because the four angels are standing on the four corners of the earth holding back the four winds, right? 444, right? And what's going to happen? The door to the Mikdash is going to open, right? And when the door to the Mikdash is open, 444, hallelujah, the harvest is going to take place. The reaping is going to take place because the 444 code is also in the book of Revelation, chapter 14, with the harvest of the earth, the reaping, the theresin, right? In the Greek, that's 444. At the time of the reaping, at the time of the harvest, everybody who's found in Jesus Christ, hallelujah, when he sends from above, Psalm chapter 20, verse 2, may he send you help, right, from the sanctuary, when he opens up the door to the mikdash, hallelujah, all of us who are found in him are going to be helped and we're going to be taken out of this world into his world, right? Because the 444 code doesn't end with just the mikdash, uh, the reaping, right? And the holding of the four winds by the four angels on the four corners of the earth. But there's also the 444 for those left behind because Damascus, right? Damascus is also 444. And the Bible says at the time of the harvest, right, there's going to be a utter destruction of Damascus, the uh, oldest continuously inhabited city in the world, right? Isaiah chapter 17, Damascus has a numerical value of 444, right? Because it's not only the sweet, it's also the bitter, right? There's a separation of light from darkness on this day. And what's going to happen? God is going to strengthen us out of Zion. Well, who is our strength, right? Jesus Christ is our strength. Who is the one who's standing up on Mount Zion? It's Jesus Christ, right? At the time when all of us are brought into the sanctuary. Revelation chapter 14, right? Revelation chapter 14, again, we see this, amen? Then I looked and behold a lamb standing on Mount Zion. Okay, so here goes the lamb standing up, right? Everything changes when the lamb stands up. Hallelujah. Everything changes when the lamb stands up. Right? Because we see the lamb standing up, the same perspective. I mean, the same. this is the same scene from a different perspective in Revelation chapter 5, right? The lamb stands up. It's the same scene from a different perspective. Mount Zion is heaven, right? And the lamb is standing up in Revelation chapter 5, right? And he takes the seven-sealed scroll, verse 6. And I looked, and behold, in the midst of the throne, and of the four living creatures, in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as though it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent out into all the earth. All right, so there we are, right? The seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent out into all the earth. The restrainer has now been removed. The restrainer is in every born-again believer. That's the Holy Spirit inside the seven churches, and we're all there with God as he stands up, right? 
as God stands up and he takes us into his house at the time of the rapture, when he comes like lightning from east to west, right? Because no one comes unto the Father unless we go through the Son. Daniel chapter 7, the Son is coming in the clouds of heaven, right? The Son of Man is coming in the clouds of heaven. And who's in the clouds of heaven? Table of showbread, the menorah. And the Bible says that uh, the Son of Man is brought near before the Ancient of Days. Who's the Ancient of Days? The Ancient of Days is the Father, right? And this is the scene that we're looking at. Revelation chapter 5, uh, verse 6 and 7. Same scene as Revelation chapter 14, just a different perspective, and it shows you all the players, right? All those who are going to be there. Then I looked, and behold, a lamb standing on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having his father's name written on their foreheads, right? And guess who's right after them? It's us, the great multitude, the menorah. Verse 2, and I heard a voice from heaven, like the voice of many waters, and like the voice of loud thunder, right? And I heard the sound of harpists playing their harps. So the voice from heaven, the voice of many waters, and the voice of loud thunder is uh, the bride of Christ, the great multitude, the menorah. We know this from Revelation chapter 19, right? Revelation chapter 19, when you see the great multitude, okay, the great multitude from every tribe, every nation, every tongue, every kindred, we see that the great multitude has the sound of many waters and the sound of mighty thundering. Verse 6, Revelation chapter 19. And I heard as a word the voice of a great multitude, as the sound of many waters, and as the sound of mighty thunderings, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. So the voice of the great multitude has the voice of many waters and has the sound of mighty thunderings. Same thing we see in Revelation chapter 14 after the 144,000 appear. Uh, there's another voice from heaven, right? The voice of many waters and like the voice of loud thunder. Well, that's a great multitude, right? Same, same order of Revelation chapter 7. You get the 144,000 first, then you get the great multitude, okay? Same setup in Revelation chapter 14, 144,000 first, great multitude, right? God is in the details, Hallelujah. But that's not all because it also says in Revelation chapter 14, and I heard the sound of harpists playing their harps. Well, where do we see the harps at? Well, that's back to Revelation chapter 5, the same scene, right? When the Lamb is standing up, right? This is where we see the harps again. And guess what? This is when the new song is sung. Hallelujah. <laughs> right? This is when the new song is sung because when the Lamb takes the scroll, we see this in verse 8. Now, when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each having a harp. Well, there goes the harps. Okay, each having a harp. There goes the harps. And golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And guess what? And they sang a new song. Okay, so it's the same scene of Revelation chapter 14. If you put the details together, you see the same scene playing out. And I heard the sound of harpists playing their harps. Well, who had the harps? The 24 elders, the priesthood, right? The course of the priesthood of the church in their courses, right? And what happens? Verse 3, they sang as it were a new song before the throne. Okay, so the new song is what? Okay, the song of the redeemed, right? Revelation chapter 5 is the same thing. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. And have made us kings and priests to our God. And we shall reign on the earth. Okay, so it's the song of the redeemed. Right? It's the song of the redeemed. And guess what? Only the 144,000 can learn this song. And God, because he doesn't want you to miss it, he puts that the 144,000 were redeemed two times. So you can know that the new song is the same song of Revelation chapter 5, which is the song of the redeemed. Revelation chapter 14, they sang as it were a new song before the throne, before the four living creatures and the elders. And no one could learn that song except the 144,000 who were redeemed, one, from the earth. These are the ones who are not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are the ones who follow the Lamb wherever he goes. These were redeemed, too, from among men, being first fruits to God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no deceit. 
for they are without fault before the throne of God. Amen. God is good. So I pray, I pray that you're understanding all this. That's why I said, you know, <laughs> we could talk for hours about this. Amen. You know, we could keep on going. We're going, we're going to finish Psalm chapter 20. So I pray that, you know, you got a little bit of time because uh, I just want to get through Psalm chapter 20. Help us, Holy Ghost. May he send you help from the sanctuary and strengthen you out of Zion. So as you can see, we're, we're talking about the rapture, right? This is when we all appear in the Mikdash. And get, well, how, how are we going to get there? Verse 3, may he remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifice, Salah. So think about what he just said now. Salah means to meditate, pause. May he remember all your offerings, right? Okay. So what is the offerings that we offer to God? Okay, in the New Covenant. Well, the Bible says we have to present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is our reasonable service, Romans chapter 12. The offerings that we offer to God is thanksgiving and praise. The offerings that we offer to God is the words of our mouth, which is the testimony that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior, right? And so may he remember all your offerings, right? We overcome the world, the flesh, and the devil. We overcome this world system. We overcome everything by faith in Jesus Christ, hallelujah. That's why we have a testimony, amen? So what is our offerings on this day that God is going to remember? Who did you believe? Right. Did you obey what he told you to do? Okay. Did you bring the right offering? What was the right offering? Well, the accepted burnt sacrifice. May he remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifice. Because many people say, Lord, Lord, right? <laughs> but they ain't got the right sacrifice. They ain't got the whole burnt offering. Who's the whole burnt offering? Jesus Christ said, except you believe that I am, you shall die in your sins. This is going back to the garden again. Right. Well, right after the garden. It's going right back to Cain and Abel. What offering are you bringing to God? My goodness. What sacrifice do you have? My goodness. Are you trying to come to God on the cloudy and dark day with your own efforts? Oh, I, I heard about Jesus. I heard, I heard about Jesus. You know these people. I heard, I heard about Jesus. I heard about Jesus. Lord, Lord, I heard about him. Right? I heard about Jesus. But they don't want to obey Jesus, right? <laughs> they want to they approach Jesus with their own offerings. They want to bring uh, the work of their own hands, right? They want to be like Cain, uh, who is that, that wicked one. They want to bring of their own sweat and their own toil. They want to bring something of their own effort to God and say, well, you know what? <laughs> uh, this is how I'm going to approach God. I'm, I'm coming uh, just like this. Okay? I'm not listening to how he tells me to come. I'm going to come the way I want to come. That's what Cain did, right? Cain knew what to bring. <laughs> Cain knew what to bring. But Cain said, nah, I'm not bringing, I'm not bringing no blood. No, I ain't bringing no blood. Cain said, I ain't bringing no blood. My goodness. <laughs> he talked about he was like that wicked one. Cain said, I ain't bringing no blood. I'm about to bring in the best of the field. Okay. I'm about to work. I'm about to work, 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 work. Okay, I'm going to get sweaty. Ooh, I'm going to get sweaty. Know that. I'm going to get sweaty. Okay. I'm about to toil with my hands. I'm going to bring God this because, you know, I'm a good person. Okay. God's going to see how good I worked. He's going to see how hard I worked. And he's going to be pleased with my sacrifice. Ooh, we. See? There's not, there's nothing new done under the sun. <laughs> right? The thing that has been is that which shall be. So the same thing at the day of the cloud, when God bends the heavens and he comes down, riding upon a cloud swiftly into Egypt. And he says, everybody muster. What's your sacrifice? Mm. <laughs> God says on that day, what's your sacrifice? Mm. <laughs> on the day when God says, everybody muster, what's your sacrifice? What's your sacrifice here? God says, may he remember all your offerings. Hallelujah. And accept your burnt sacrifice. Because if you ain't got the whole burnt offering, which is the Ola, right? The Hebrews, the Ola, the whole burnt offering, which is what Jesus Christ did on the cross. He offered up everything. Okay. He poured out his soul even unto death. He tasted death for every man. When God saw his soul in travail, right? He's offering for sin. He was pleased because it pleased him to crush him. It pleased the Father to crush the Son. My goodness. 
I mean, we can't even enter in. It's just, it's just incomprehensible. But God was satisfied. That's why he cried out, it is finished. Hallelujah. And so if, if you're not identified with that burnt offering, which is the only burnt offering that God accepts, well, you're in a world of hurt. Okay, because on this day, God is going to remember all of our offerings. And he's going to accept the burnt sacrifice of Jesus Christ, those who have been identified with him. Because if you've been identified with him, your offering is the testimony, right? The testimony that you have, which is what? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Amen. The Bible says if you're ashamed of him, he's going to be ashamed of you. Okay. If you deny him before men, he's going to deny you before the angels and his father. So on the day when he said everybody must have, and you over there talking about a different Jesus. Oh, well. And you say, but, 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 well, no, shake. You're going to say, but, 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 no, shake. You're going to say, but, 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 no, God says shake. Hallelujah. Ain't no buts. Right? Ain't no buts. <laughs> right? That, that's, what, that's what the foolish virgins try to say. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Can you sell me some, some oil? No. Nah. Okay. I got to get out of here. Can't, can't give you no oil? You got to get out of here. What you talking about? You can't buy and sell anyway. You better take that mock. You want to buy and sell? Okay. You can't buy and sell no more. I'm out of here. Okay. One way express to the Father's house. Hallelujah. <laughs> Got no order, got no oil to sell you. What you talking about? Right? But, 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 but. No. Okay. It's too late for the butts on the day when God comes to get us. Amen. Verse four. May he grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all your counsel. Hallelujah. So what is your heart's desire? Right? What is your, what is your heart's desire? And the Hebrew for this is the labab, right? It's the inner man. Let me just show this to you. Okay, this talks about the circumcision. The circumcision that we've received through the new birth, right? May he grant you according to your heart's desire. Okay, this is a labab. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the labab, the inner man, the mind, the will, the heart. Have you been circumcised? Amen. Have you received the heart transplant? Amen. Because if you've received the heart transplant, okay, if you've received the uh, new nature, amen, if uh, your outward man is perishing, but the inner man is being renewed day by day because you've been born again. Hallelujah. Well, your desire is what? <laughs> what is your desire on this day? My goodness. On the day when the cloud comes. What's your desire? To hunker down in a bunker? Come on. It's your desire to hunker down in a bunker on the day when the cloud comes? Come on, man. What, what, I mean, what are you talking about? Okay. God says, may he grant you according to your heart's desire. What is the inner man's desire? Is it the blessed hope? I pray it is. <laughs> is it the blessed hope? The glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who will change this lowly body to be made like unto his glorious body? What's your desire? To hunker down? Come on. Is your desire to, to, to get your bug out bag and ride out the apocalypse in your bunker? Come on. That's your desire. Is your desire to pull up your bootstraps, okay, and get and and hope that you survive on the sand so that you can see who's coming out to sea? Is that your desire? Come on now. The Bible says, "May He grant you according to your heart's desire." Have you been circumcised in your heart? That's the question. You see, because if you've been circumcised in your heart, honey. If you've received the new birth, amen. <laughs> if you've received the Holy Ghost. Now you have the spirit of counsel, amen. And that's why uh, the verse goes on to say, and fulfill all your counsel. That's the etza, right? The counsel is the etza. That's the fourth spirit of the Holy Spirit, right? The spirit of counsel, the spirit of etza, right? Because if you've been circumcised in your heart, if you've been circumcised in your labab, and you now have the mind of Christ, and your desire is his desire, Right, because you want to be with him on the day when he comes on the clouds. You're not trying to hunker down because your stakes are driven into the earth, and you say, you know what, I'm gonna have to ride out the apocalypse. No, it's all foolishness, right? If you really dig down deep, but you don't have to dig down deep. You just have to be a childlike, have a childlike faith, and say, yes, Lord, I believe your promises, and I know that you're gonna come and get us at the time of the rapture. Amen. 
God says, may he grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all of your etza. Right? Here goes the word etza. This is the Hebrew word counsel. Etza is counsel, advice. Amen. This is the same word, okay? The etza, which is the fourth spirit of Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2, right? Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2 is what? That's the seven spirits of God, right? Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of etza, amen, is counsel advice, right? Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2, the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, that's one. The spirit of wisdom, two, and understanding, three. The spirit of counsel, four, right? So the spirit of counsel is the etza. Right, So if you have received uh, the new birth, if you have received the circumcision, right, if you've received uh, the heart transplant, well, the counsel, right, the counsel is given to you of God, right, because now the Holy Spirit's dwelling in you. Right? You have the spirit of counsel, right? You have the Holy Ghost in you, which is the spirit of counsel, right? Here you go, the spirit of counsel, etza, right? And the spirit of counsel, etza. Counsel, advice. And so the Bible says that the counsel of the Lord is going to stand forever. So what is the counsel of the Lord? That he's going to rapture his bride. <laughs> That's the counsel of the Lord. Right? The counsel of the Lord, that shall stand. There's many, plan there's many plans in a man's heart. But the counsel of the Lord, that's what's going to stand. Right? The question is, are you going to stand on this day? Or are you going to be shaken? Right? Because if you're not standing upon the rock, which is Jesus Christ, because you're filled with the spirit of Etsa, because you have the counsel of the Holy Ghost, well, you're in a world of hurt, okay? You're in a world of hurt. That's, that's the best way I can put it. You're in a world of hurt, okay? If you're not found in Christ on this day, when our heart's desire is fulfilled, when God fulfills all of his Etsa concerning the Christ, concerning the body of Christ, well, I don't know what to tell you, but hey, Repent and believe the gospel. Verse 5, now look at this. We will rejoice in your salvation, amen. So we're, we've, we've been reading about the rapture, right? All of us are going to be raptured, right? All of us are going to be taken to the mikdash. We're going to be taken into the sanctuary. We're going to be strengthened uh, by uh, the helper. When you go into uh, the sanctuary as God strengthens us out of Zion when he stands up, right? And he remembers all of our offerings. Right? He remembers all of us who have accepted the burnt sacrifice, which is the death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And he grants us, according to our heart's desire, which is the new birth and God's desire for us, because we're one in him, he's going to fulfill all of his counsel. Right? His counsel, his etza, his purpose, hallelujah, is to rapture his bride right? in the day of trouble when God hears us. And the name of the God of Jacob, Yeshua, Jesus, is going to defend us with the rapture. He's going to take us from the clutches of the dragon who's standing before the woman to devour us as soon as we're born. Right? And what happens? What happens when we go into the sanctuary? What do we have? We have rejoicing, the new song, verse 5. We will rejoice in your salvation. Amen. <laughs> This is a new song. Amen. You just can't make it up. You can't make it up even if you tried. We will rejoice. We enter into his tabernacles with thanksgiving and praise. Now look at this. Okay, it's just so it's just so it's just so much uh so much goodness in the word of God. Hallelujah. Uh Psalm uh, chapter 20 verse 5. Let me show you this. Hallelujah. We will rejoice. Look at this word for rejoice. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. The renown. Hallelujah. The renown to give a ringing cry. Hallelujah. You talk about cry out loud. My goodness, this word, to give a ringing cry, okay, in joy, in exaltation. Okay, this, is, this, is, this is a new song. Shouting aloud for joy, crying out, being joyful greatly, all right? A cause to shout for joy. This is the new song that we enter into the Father's house with, right? And what's the new song? How does it begin? It begins with Yeshua. Right? It begins with salvation. Right? It begins with the name of the Lord, who is a strong tower. The righteous run to him and we are safe. Okay? So this renown that we have at the time of the rapture, when we go into the Father's house, this cry of rejoicing is what? It's Yeshua. Right? Salvation. It's the Yeshua 
salvation. Three times we see the word salvation in the book of Revelation. Amen. Three times we see the word salvation in the book of Revelation. And guess what? All three times is the same event, just from different perspectives, right? Let me show this to you. Help us, Holy Ghost. I pray that you're being blessed. Amen. Salvation. Look at this. Salvation. Right? Because that's the name of Jesus. Right? Yeshua. New Testament. Let's go to the book of Revelation. So you see, Revelation, there's three verses. Okay, in the book of Revelation. One for the Father, one for the Son, and one for the Holy Ghost. If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Hallelujah. How say, show us the Father? <laughs> if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Hallelujah. Three times in the book of Revelation, the revelation of who? Jesus Christ. One for the Father, one for the Son, one for the Holy Ghost. Salvation is sung. And when is salvation sung? At the time of rescue in the day of trouble, right? Revelation chapter 7, verse 10. Look at this. First time we see it. This is the great multitude. Again, you can't make it up. This is the great multitude. This is the body of Christ. Okay? We are the ones who lead off with the new song. Revelation chapter 5. Only the 144,000 can learn it. All right? Revelation chapter 14. It's the song of the redeemed. And who's redeemed us? Yeshua. What is the name of Yeshua? Salvation. Right? Revelation chapter 7 verse 9. After this I beheld and lo a great multitude which no one could number of all nations and kindreds and peoples and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Hazazon Tamar, division of the palm trees. What type of tree are you? I mean, we go on and on, family of God. <laughs> I mean, you, you, the evidence will not stop. Okay, the Bible is from everlasting to everlasting. Forever is his word settled in heaven. We go on and on. Okay, this is nonstop evidence. Okay. I have been bringing out, have, have you, can you testify, okay, in the court of law, okay? Can you testify in the court of law that I have introduced to you any type of commentary from somebody else? <laughs> or have we just stuck to the facts and we let the Holy Spirit speak for himself, right? It's the Holy Spirit that takes the things of God and makes them real to us. So here we see the first time we run into the word salvation, it comes from those who have the palm branches. What type of tree are you? Okay. What type of tree are you? Are you going to be separated at Hazazon Tamar? Hazazon Tamar means division of the palm trees. I won't teach that right now because that's a teaching in and of itself. But the teaching is, what type of tree are you? Okay, because the palm trees are prominent forever. Okay, the palm trees, oh my goodness. Help me, Holy Ghost. I just want, I just want to, I just want to, you know. This is serious business though, you know. Because we're talking about eternity, amen. <laughs> we're talking about eternity. In the, in the, in the tabernacle, in, in the very temple of God during the millennial reign, okay. The Bible says, my goodness, in the very temple, there's a palm tree and a cherub, a palm tree and a cherub, a palm tree and a cherub. The very temple of God. A palm tree placed right next to a cherub? That's why God said that we're going to even judge the angels. Amen. <laughs> okay. Uh, God has made us a little lower than the angels. All right. Okay. <laughs> he has made man a little lower than the angels. Right. But in forever. Right. In forever and ever. Okay. We're, we're going to be, you know, even above the angels, hallelujah. <laughs> We're going to be above the angels, hallelujah. And God places us, right? The body of Christ, his bride, right? Palm tree and a cherub, palm tree and a cherub, palm tree and a cherub in the very temple where the throne of God is, okay? So you, you trying to tell me that, these, that this great multitude is somebody else other than the church? Oh, well, the devil is a lie, okay? Devil is a lie. The Bible tells us that the palm trees is me and you, right? If you're part of the body of Christ, <laughs> the palm branches, Jesus Christ is the vine. We are the branches. The very menorah is a tree. The middle stem, which is the vine from which every branch branches out, right? There's seven 
lamps, right? And the middle stem is the vine, and all of the branches branch out from the middle stem, and it looks like a tree. And so if you are a tree, you have a branch, right? And are you going to bear fruit? <laughs> because if you bear fruit, some 100-fold, some 60-fold, some 30-fold, hallelujah, that means that you're going to receive a reward. And there's going to be positions in the kingdom of God. And the Bible says, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to serve in the, t in the tents of wickedness, right? To dwell in the tents of wickedness, says the psalmist. And so at the very entrances of the tabernacle, right? The outer gate, 30-fold. The inner gate, 60-fold. The temple, 100-fold. We're going to have positions in the temple because guess what? God says we are the temple of God, right? So where God is, we're going to be there too, right? He's the head, we're the body. So we're going to be serving at the temple in courses in various positions, some closer than others, right? This is what the Bible says, right? Some 30-fold, some 60-fold, some 100-fold. We keep on going with that, but let's keep on going with this. Revelation chapter 7, verse 9. And after this I beheld and lo, a great multitude which no one could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation, Yeshua, to our God which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. Hallelujah. So here goes the first time you run into the word salvation in the book of Revelation. Great multitude cries it out, right? Remember in Psalm chapter 20, <laughs> when we all go into the sanctuary, when God answers us in the day of trouble, when uh, the righteous run to the name of the Lord, which is a strong tower, and he defends us, right? When he remembers all of our offerings and accepts uh, the sacrifice that we've been identified with, which is himself, Jesus Christ, and he grants us according to our heart's desire, which is the blessed hope, and he fulfills all of his counsel, which is the, uh, the spirit of Etsa in us, the restraint is going to be removed, right, and taken to the Father's house, and the body of Christ is filled with the restrainer, which is the Holy Ghost. What's going to happen? We're going to have a renown, okay? We're going to cry aloud with a new song, verse 5. We will rejoice in your salvation, Yeshua, right? The first thing that the great multitude says, I pray that you're getting this, hallelujah. Okay, I pray that you're getting this. The first thing that we say, the great multitude, we lead off the new song, right? We lead off the new song, right? This is the new song, the song of the redeemed. And we cry with a loud voice, the Renan, the Renan, okay? We're crying aloud, Renan, saying salvation. First time we see salvation, okay? But remember, we see it two more times, but it's the same event, just from a different perspective. Right. So the second time we see salvation is in Revelation chapter 12, verse 10. Right. Revelation chapter 12, verse 10. This is the war in heaven. This is when the enemy gets cast out. Right. When the enemy gets cast out, when the heavens are shaken at the same time when the door to heaven is open. Right. On the day that God has promised, he shakes not only the earth, but also the heavens. And so when the dragon is cast down because he's trying to stand before the woman to devour the child as soon as we're born, he's trying to say, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. Right? God says, no, you won't. He's descending upon a cloud, and he says, darkness is under his feet. Right? And so the Lord rebukes him. Right? And he says, Michael, go and get him. Amen? And Michael stands up. In the time of trouble, Daniel chapter 12 begins for those left behind under God's feet. And so here we see Revelation chapter 12. Okay? I'll begin at verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. Amen? which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation. Okay, who's that loud voice? <laughs> who's the loud voice? It's the great multitude, right? The voice of many waters, the voice like great thunder, right? It's the great multitude. We're saying salvation. It's the same event because it's all happening at the same time, right? The same time that the dragon is getting cast down is the same time that we go up, right? The light is separated from the darkness. And the first thing that we say when we have the Renan, okay, the loud cry of rejoicing is salvation. We say the name of Jesus as his name. Hallelujah. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. 
and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they loved not their lives unto the death hallelujah this is exactly what we're reading in psalm chapter 20 we overcome by the blood of the lamb right? may the lord remember all of our offerings and our burnt sacrifice and they overcome him by the blood of the lamb there goes the burnt sacrifice and by the word of their testimony there goes our offerings right this is psalm chapter 20 right psalm chapter 20 may he remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifice salah think about it revelation chapter 12 think about it it goes hand in hand that's the second time that we see salvation right so the third time we see salvation one for the father one for the son one for the holy ghost revelation chapter 19 who is this okay again the great multitude <laughs> revelation chapter 19 verse 1 and after these things after what things after the destruction of babylon the great right at the same time that the enemy is cast down it's the same time that babylon the great is destroyed it's the day of trouble right and at the same time that babylon the great is destroyed same time that the enemy is cast down is the same time that two people are going to be in the field one taken raptured the other one left amen it's all that same day of trouble and for those of us who are taken when jesus christ comes on the clouds like lightning from east to west the bible says when we enter into his gates with thanksgiving and praise with the renan we're going to cry out salvation one for the father one for the son one for the holy ghost it's a new song hallelujah Revelation chapter 19 verse 1 and of these things I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying hallelujah salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God for true and righteous are his judgments for he hath judged the great whole which did corrupt the earth with her fornication and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand and again they said hallelujah and her smoke rose up forever and ever who's the great whore Babylon the great so we're seeing this is the same day it's at the same time right we saw the pattern we saw the pattern for the three salvations right the three praises of Yeshua one for the father one for the son one for the Holy Ghost all happening at the same time John is giving us the revelation from a different perspective but it's the same event it's at the time of the rapture when we escape the destruction of Babylon the great when we escape the casting down of Satan hallelujah when we go through the open door with the table of showbread, 144,000 and the menorah, us, the body of Christ. Okay, it's all that same day, same time. But the question is, are you ready? Amen. Revelation chapter, chapter 5. <laughs> Revelation, uh, I'm sorry, Psalm chapter 20, verse 5. We will rejoice in your salvation. Amen. And in the name of our God, we will set up our banners. All right. So this is, this is Song of Solomon. <clears throat> Hallelujah. This is the Song of Solomon, chapter 2, right? When he brings us into the banqueting house, right? And his banner over us is love, right? Because he's Jehovah Nisi, right? God is love. Who is God? Jesus Christ, right? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Song of Solomon, chapter 2. He brought me to the banqueting house, and his banner over me was love. Hallelujah. What's the banqueting house? The banqueting house is the marriage supper of the Lamb. Revelation chapter 19, right? And what's his banner over us? Love. We're his redeemed, right? God has shed abroad his love upon us, right? God has demonstrated his love. He is Jehovah Nisi, in that while we were still yet sinners, Christ died for us. So as we go into the Father's house, right, and he's our banner, right? The banner over us is love. We're part of the blessing. He is the banner, Jehovah Nisi, right? Psalm chapter 20, uh, verse 5, uh, we will rejoice in your salvation in the name of our God. We will set up our banners, where? In the banqueting house. This is all about the marriage supper, okay? May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. What's your petitions? To be left behind in the cloudy and dark day? I don't think so, okay? Well, what, is your what is your petition if you know them? Okay, to be caught up in the rapture, the blessed hope. That's your petition, right? He's going to fulfill it, amen? Verse 6, now I know that the Lord saves his anointed, amen? Have you been anointed with the Holy Ghost? Okay, from the top of your head to the soles of your feet? Okay, well, we're, you're going to know 
what God is going to do on the cloudy and dark day from a personal experience when your uh, lowly body is uh, translated into a glorious body, just like Jesus' body. Hallelujah. Now you will know on that day that the Lord, he saves his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Okay? Some people trust in chariots. Some people trust in horses. Some people trust in government. Some people trust in military. Some people trust in bombs. Some people trust in nukes. Some people trust in the stock market. Some people uh, trust in their own strength. Right? Okay, some people, they trust in what Big Brother says. Some people trust in what Mommy and Daddy said. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Okay, there's two different foundations. If your foundation is tied to this world, well, if your foundation is tied to this world, well, okay, verse 8 tells us what's going to happen. This is the day of muster. Okay, what's going to be your trust? Your trust is going to be revealed on this day. Okay. Because if your trust is in chariots, if your trust is in horses, if your trust is in anything else except Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, the Bible says, verse 8, you're going to fall down. They have bowed down and fallen. Okay, everything going to shake on this day. That can be shaken. And if you trusted in chariots and horses, well, you're going to shake on this day. Right? But how about us? But we have risen and stand upright. Right? The Bible says... That he's going to remove the pillars, right? Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn out her seven pillars. The church of Philadelphia is what? Right? The church of Philadelphia says that the door is open at that time. And the pillars are set up in the temple of God, right? Because we can't be moved. We are going to rise and we're going to stand upright. Hallelujah. Just like Samson removed the pillars, right? And then once Samson removed the pillars, right? What happened? Everything else came crashing down. Everything else shook. Right? But the pillars were removed. Who are the pillars? The pillars are the church. Right? The pillars are me and you. Right? The pillars are me and you. Amen? That's why there's a cherub in the palm tree, cherub in the palm tree, cherub in the palm tree, cherub in the palm tree in the temple. The pillars are me and you. Verse 9. Save, Lord. May the king answer us when we call. Hallelujah. <coughs> God is good, family of God. I pray that you are blessed. And I pray that the Lord will save. And may he answer us when we call. I pray that you uh, took this all in. Uh, and I pray that, uh, you know, you were edified. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions. And please let me know if uh, I blessed you through the power of the Holy Spirit tonight. And uh, that you were filled up. Uh, because uh, I sure was. Psalm chapter 20. What a beautiful psalm about the rapture. In Jesus' name. They made it to Mobile, Alabama. Mobile, Alabama. Praise the Lord. I made it. Voice is doing better today because God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Here on Dolphin Street, I'm about to lift up a shout. Praise God, people all around here. I'm going to preach right here. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. As you see, I'm drenched. I'm drenched out here in uh, Gulfport, Mississippi. <laughs> so this is my second stop today. Earlier, I preached in uh, Mobile, Alabama. Now I'm here in Gulfport, Mississippi. Hallelujah. Preaching here in downtown. Worked up a sweat. Shirt is drenched. I praise King Jesus that he's given me the power through the power of the Holy Spirit to be an ambassador, minister of reconciliation, <laughs> to invite people to come, be born again and live forever. Next stop, New Orleans. Bring some light in that house of voodoo. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God, family of God. It was just down there on Canal Street, preaching the Bible, preaching the gospel here in New Orleans. God is so good. And so now I'm leaving another state down, and God is good. Hallelujah. Not much time left. Take care.
pray that we'll always be ready. Amen. When the king comes. As you can see, I'm drenched again. Praise God. It's always good. Give out a shout. Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Well, the Bible tells us, family of God, to let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So if you got breath because God's giving you another chance to walk on his earth, breathe in his air, soak in his sunshine, free of charge, give him praise and say hallelujah. For the King of glory is Jesus Christ and he's coming soon. PriestTheLoveOfGod.com See you in the air. Amen. Many, many tekel you farsin was the handwriting on the wall that appeared at Belteshazzar's drunken feast in ancient Babylon that weighed and numbered and found the kingdom of Babylon wanting in God's judgment scales. And that very night, Babylon was overtaken by the Medes and Persians. Well, our God doesn't change. Now at the time of the end, he has put his handwriting in the sky. For at the time of the end, there shall be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. And so what you're looking at is the path of totality for three solar eclipses. The first one happened August 21st, 2017, the Great American Solar Eclipse. The next one that will take place is an annular solar eclipse that will go from California to Texas on October the 14th, 2023. And then the final Great American Solar Eclipse Part 2 will take place on April 8th, 2024. That will form an olive over America. And at the same time, it will produce the Tav over America. The olive and the Tav is the name of God. Jesus Christ declares that he is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Here we have a heavenly sign that only God can make with the solar eclipses that will reach its fullness on April 8th, 2024. The next solar eclipse after April 8th, 2024, which completes the olive and the Tav over America, the next solar eclipse to happen over America will not happen until 2045. What is God trying to tell us? The time is short. Therefore, look up, for our redemption draws nigh. The rapture is soon. Will you be found in Jesus or will you be left behind? The choice is yours. Live forever and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Amen.